Welcome, dear readers, to Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by its cover. And we find ourselves once more amid the towering stacks of your library. And I'm very excited to be here with you today on the cusp of... I mean, it's been bear season for a while. Yeah, it's almost over, actually. You've got to hurry up. Now, I've, got, I've got until November, and it's now... Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's now the 10th of October, actually. Oh, wow. I hope that math works. Yes. <laughs> so you're right. I am going to have to uh, get a move on, but I think I'm in a good position to do so because check it out. Here is the Mark 15 pro or anti bear suit, depending on how things work out. Are you trying to romance them or scare them away, really? We'll find out when I get to infiltrate them. But Kay, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you gave me the suggestion to use the aluminum cladding off the, yeah. off the air vents in the uh, Norwegian uh, 17th century romance section. Where did you find the faux fur? It is faux fur, right? Yeah. I don't have a microscope. I don't. Oh. I don't know. But yes, interesting that you that you should mention it. So I I found some. Okay. Was there still found, a bear in it? No, no, no. I found okay. little. I found little clumps of bear. It. No, just just bits of okay. clumps of clumps of fur here and there. Oh. So. I don't know if it's bear fur. I'm going to guess so. I mean, you've never told me about any other furry animals in, in the library. Other than the librarianess, but she's white and they're definitely not yes, matching exactly, this. Yeah. exactly. I've just sort of stuck it on hither, thither and yon. Yes. Um, I it thought does bear... look a bit like a patchwork bear or yes. mangy no, yeah. is the word that comes to mind. But that's... From an aesthetic viewpoint, I, will, I don't want to dis- yeah. I don't want to like diss no. your beautiful creation here. So please, please tell me a little bit more about it. Well, Why Mark it? Fifteen? What happened through? I mean, last time we were on Mark Three. What happened to the last eleven? Who's keeping count? I mean, certainly not uh, me. No, you're right. You're right. Of course. I guess I inhaled from the quill a bit too much as I was. Uh, uh, Are you sniffing ink again? Writing uh, only the. Red ink, which one we said, yes. we said was okay again? Oh, good one. <laughs> a uh, test for continuity, which... Hey, Kay, do you remember how you had this really important tip for me of yes. which ink I should use if I wanted to keep my memories? I was pretty sure you weren't, weren't supposed to use the purple one. Was that the memory one? Oh, Hard to remember. Yes. Ooh, maybe yeah. I dipped my quill in the wrong bottle. Okay. Well, I'm sure that's not going to come up again. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I think I'm doing okay. Your point is well taken because I do look like a bit of a, an unhealthy bear. bear. Yes. But I think it's an improvement over... Maybe like, they the, take the, pity the, on you, bring the, you a salmon. I know you love salmon. I do. Although I also like mackerel. Mm. Oh, mackerel is very good. Uh, yeah, I think mackerel's a working man's fish. A oh. bit of smoked mackerel. Mm. Well, it's very fatty, so I, I, I try to yes. go with trout myself. It's, ah, it's, yes, all, you get that as a tip. Same oh. flavor and half the amount of calories. So, as this conversation points out, mm-hmm. I think I already have a lot in common with bears. So that now I'm equipped with an anti- or pro-bear suit that is capable of withstanding their... Mm, probing nips and uh, uh, and claws and 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 shelves. I still yeah. like to to, to roughhouse, and they are they are big, strong creatures. I think I'm equipped to go and find them yeah. and infiltrate their uh, their community and become one of them just as easily as I did with the, uh, the uh, with the Velibra raptors. Yeah. So. I mean, Keep us posted. Make sure to leave notes which way you went. So if I have to send out a search party or, God forbid, go myself, then I know which way to go. As good an idea as that is, my fingers are not very dexterous. They're in these in these mitts. No. Uh, and for the for the readers at home, post-it um, notes. The yeah, you prepare them with arrows and you stick them on the bookshelves. Oh, that's then, a good idea. Yes. Can you make me some? Because I'm actually like I got mm. into this suit. And yeah, I don't sure. Know I'll that recycle. I can necessarily get out again. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. I will, I'll just recycle some of last week's notes and put some big fat arrows on them. With yeah, the, that sounds great. With marker pen. That sounds, okay. That sounds and great. And then you're so, going to be after we finish uh, this week's recording. You're going to be. I'm off going to be straight bearing. off. Like I, I, I look like a Michelin Man robot. What's, what, what's powering it? With you? Mostly me. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So well, that's good. Yep, like, yep, we yep. wouldn't want any runaway nuclear reactors or whatever. You oh, do you have come. any? No, they ran away. <laughs> That's so sad. That's really sad. Kay, do you want to tell me what? about the... Did they leave you? I suppose something went critical. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you shouldn't have plunged your cooling rod into their core quite well, so... Hmm. Like... It's not graphite tipped, so... <laughs> I don't know. Is latex a moderator? Uh-huh. Speaking of moderators, can we get there from here? Speaking of moderators, which is sort of like a dungeon master, well, what do we have in store for our readers this week? Yes, this week's book is a anthology of fantasy presented by Marion Zimmer Bradley. So she didn't edit it, she didn't write oh, it. That's a good point. I assume she only presented it. So I assume they're just like going off her name here and like yeah, here yeah. have some stories that Marion some... Zimmer Bradley thinks are okay. But I wonder if she got well, she probably got paid. But uh, yes, Ooh, yeah. it's, it's called Grey Haven. It's an anthology of fantasy. 
And, well, we see on the cover of the book the uh, a collection of heroes that... I love that, this cover. Oh, you know, it's a collection of characters, old and some new, uh, from uh, what people may remember uh, from their youth as uh, the cartoon Dungeons & Dragons. That ran on CBS from 1983 to 1985, animated by Toei in Japan. It is a, it is a classic. I grew up with it, as did, as did many of my generation. And for the, for the readers at home, if you look down at your podcasting device, you should, should be seeing the cover of today's book. Uh, and otherwise, you can check the show notes for an image and a link, and you'll want to because this cover is another doozy. I think this is a Wuthering Lancelot, the, the second original. It has to be. It's, Our favourite uh, imaginary book cover artist. It shows all the famous characters. Well, not all of them, actually. Some of the no. uh, characters from the book. You've got and, they, the, and they have changed a little the bit. The unicorn who is grown a little bit older. Not for much bigger, though. I mean, he's clearly older than a little culticorn. Is that what you call him? Oh, that's uh, nice. Uh, back a in little, the original. A little yearling foal. Yes. Still about the same size, but definitely more older and wizened. And he's got the Pai Mei chin beard going on. Yes. He's got the sort of Fu Manchu. It's more of a goatee, I think. Yeah, Might, uh, honestly, uh, look, just looking at the, at the, at the face structure... It's a goat. It's a goat with a dildo in its head, well, right? More like a corkscrew, meh, but yeah. Meh. Like a normal but that's, that's what, Yeah, but the little thing... Little uni. It always sounded a little bit like... Meh. Meh. And it had the yeah, little, it had the, the sweet little bleat. Unoffensive little horn on top, which did magic, didn't it do? You know, my memories of that period are hazy, as are many of my memories of the of the period before my arrival in your uh, uh, wondrous library, uh, which is something that I have in common with the characters in this book and the and the and, and the cartoon that preceded it. Uh, I think the guy on the right is not the dungeon master who has grown remarkably taller. I think that is actual uh, our, our magician from the original Albert or. Presto, as he was commonly referred to during the series. Yeah, time has not been kind to him. No. He now has a, has, a, has, a, has a bald pate, and he has a wine nose and a moustache. I mean, he looks a lot more like the Dungeon Master did, so maybe that's what, what the kind of role that he grew into in <laughs> yes. the... Uh, in his velour frock, uh, he has a sort which of... Which he's still wearing, it, it, although it, it looks more like a... Um, like uh, a morning coat. Yeah, that's the one. Like you'd right. expect the gentleman from Playboy. What's his name? I was going to go Bernie, Bernie and Wooster. No, uh, Bertie and Wooster. and Wooster, but... Yeah, that makes sense. that uh, you... No, not you, Jackman, the other one. Uh, you, you, Laurie. <laughs> oh, yes, the other one. They're so easy to, to, to confuse with one another. One yeah. of them is, a, is a, a, a ripped Australian, and the other one is kind of a cheeky Brit that sometimes pretend to be American. Very, very well, by the very, way. Yes, yeah, uh, fine. Someone with a proper MD. American accent. Well, that's the thing. As we've talked about before, yes. when you do a foreign accent, do a specific foreign accent. In his case, like he went for a Nebraskan accent, a no. North Nebraskan accent that, no. he, that he absolutely nailed. But yeah, I think that's, that, that is indeed pressed who I think his original name was like Albert, Albert. or Albert, yes, Alfred. It was. Yeah, but he uh, uh, he was a precocious little uh, uh, magician, even as a, as a child. Who couldn't really do well. I mean, he's the one that he came out most with the lasso, and he always had to pull it out of the hat or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, that's and really he was, cool he was a bit of an ineffectual magician, as I recall. So let's take a look at the, uh, 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 the back cover. Uh, before we get into oh. this uh, uh, this cover too much, because it has a it has a synopsis here. And strap yourselves in, because there are some emotions here that we're going to have to deal with. The children of the cartoon Dungeons and Dragons eventually returned to the real world, uh, which was, by the way, uh, it, uh, this is me, Kaki. Hi, your friend. I'm interrupting the uh, the synopsis here. Um, that did not occur in the cartoon. There was an unproduced final episode that would have seen the villain Venger. Uh, redeemed and revealed as the dungeon master's estranged son, and uh, whom, we, whom we can actually see on on the front cover as well. You can see him standing in the background. He's still got his black wings, but other than that, he is now known as Venger the White, uh, as you will see later <laughs> in the yes. year. Yeah, so <laughs> very good. One. He looks a bit like Sting now, but rather than I was going to say <laughs> Bowie in his yeah. like Aladdin insane face. Uh, yeah, if you I, if you imagine him like wiping the the stars off his face. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> either that or Tilda Swinton. Anyway, uh, the children of the cartoon Dungeons and Dragons eventually return to the real world, but each fled back to this magical realm to reclaim their wondrous magical destinies and hide from their regrets, debts, and arrest warrants. But there is no escape in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons! Yes. Do you like how I did that? You carry it very well. Thank uh, you. It's, uh, yes. Thank you. I wonder if the editing gods will be kind enough to give me a little reverb on that one. We'll see. Oh, I'm sure you can manage. So, yeah, it's interesting that you that you point out uh, uh, Avenger straight away, because the one that, that jumped out at me was uh, Bobby the Barbarian. Ah, yes. He's originally the little kid, but he's now a, a big, strapping, hulking, bearded gentleman. Yes, known as Bobby Brastis. <laughs> yes, yes, I noticed that as well. So it should be, like, armour that he's wearing. But, but it's like gold shirt. jerkin. Yeah, it's like he's wearing one of the, uh, you know, uh, Zentai shirts. 
shirts. Grey with, tan, yeah. It is. A 300 poof had nothing on them. <laughs> with the, I mean, it looks like it's a uh, hammered bronze breastplate, but it fits like spandex. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's, got a, it's even got an underwire under the pec. Like, look oh. at the, the, the enormous shadow that is his massive pectoral muscle yeah. uh, 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 casts. And he's uh, uh, he's wearing a muscle gut is being uh, hidden by the the lady in green. Now, who do we think that that is? Um, uh, well, I would think that is uh, that's uh, Sheila, but uh, yes, unless the... unless Diana had a uh, Michael Jackson episode, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, yes, Sheila, the uh, uh, the thief who is seen here with a uh, with a circlet on her head and a, and, a, and a green gown and a knife at her waist and some children by her side holding an orb that displays what looks like just a regular house an, an, an ordinary I would assume modern. that's the the portal back home that Oh, do you know what the original yeah. portal was? The carnival ride. Yeah, it was a but, roller coaster. Yeah, but I can't remember how they ever came back or whatever exactly happened there. Well, but, exactly because in the cartoon they yeah. never they never did come back oh, because no. that, that final yeah. episode was never uh, was never produced. But they they did eventually make it out but now at least some of them that we see here on the cover have uh, have returned. The last one on the left I'm tempted to say that that's maybe Eric, the the, the cavalier. I know. No, well, I think that's the woman he got married to after he got back home, and he mm. is now in a bitter divorce uh, with because uh, Eric, as, as we, we see in the first story of the anthology, has uh, kidnapped his children, who are the two uh, uh, yes. little uh, the two cherubic little, little children who are who are approaching this whole world like like it's a it's a big Narnia well, adventure. Well, to them, it's it's a little bit of the the, the original series, but without the dread and despair and like oh my god we are far away from home and we have to fight monsters and yeah. uh, Eric still has his protective shield that's... oh yes that's right because they all had special weapons like... yes everyone had their special thing Hank the Ranger had his uh, had bow. his bow and that could shoot magical light arrows and of course Presto had his hat Diana she probably had a, a staff, uh, she had the staff yeah yeah, yeah the, that's the, right. the, the, the glowy staff uh, I can't See, remember I'm, I'm surprised how much I can't I remember, remember what this. Sheila had uh, the, uh, the thief uh... well whatever was in anybody else's pockets I suppose well she, she never struck me as particularly thieving in the series that I can remember yes and that uh, did change once she escaped though oh well yes uh, she thought that like those skills acquired in Dungeons and Dragons I mean it's not demon summoning but like pickpocketing apparently does transfer to uh, real world effects and and that's kind of been the story with all of these these characters they, they, they came out of this this magical realm back into the real world and they they grew up and they made regular life decisions yeah. like like adults do and those decisions were not great for any of them no, it did Lots not work out. Lots of time and failure yeah. and regret. And in the book, everybody has their own little story, which does their little tale of what happened to them after it's like it came framing, back. It's like a framing story. Oh, well, that's what what you can do in an anthology. Everybody... I, I thought it was so good. It sort of reminded me of like the the like the Decameron or the Canterbury Tales, hmm. yes, where you have you know the partners' very tale very and apt uh, tale. very apt comparison. Yes. So I thought I thought it was kind of like Eric kidnapping his his own children. Like that was. I mean, that was really dark. And this was a very dark show to begin with. Like, there's, yes. a, there's an episode of this cartoon program for children um, where the, the, the characters contemplate suicide. There, there had to be a warning. Uh, oh, this was fantastic. On American television, there was, a, there was a warning aired before every episode indicating that Dungeons & Dragons, playing Dungeons & Dragons, uh, yes. had been associated with real-life violence, which was... Uh. I mean, it was a bit early for the the Satanism fear in the in the nineteen nineties, no, right? Oh well, it was definitely fueled was that by a 90s the yeah. Thing? But remember, Dungeons and Dragons in nonsense. popular culture already goes back to eighty something in ET. When right at the beginning, there uh, the kids are oh, playing. That's right. Yeah, and the the, the 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 boy Elliot, I think his name is, wants to join his big brother's uh, game. And I, I guess at that point, he didn't have the scare and like, oh, children will learn how to summon demons and yes, cast spells exactly. and all kind of bullshit and like like. <laughs> I mean, I wish. If only. It's like, if, yeah, only if only. It's like. <laughs> I've, I've painted all the figurines. I've done the dance. Where's my hunky demon? Uh, I recently read there was a, a, a there was a, a a big big long expose about the legendary origins of Dungeons and Dragons and how the what, uh, Gary Gygax turning miniature warfare into a, a fantasy thing. So goes the legend. There are survivors of that era who tell a more nuanced story. Who. Mm. Uh, paint Gygax as certainly crucial, but there are other crucial figures in this evolution oh, well, as yes. well, crediting him with perhaps the commercialization, but also with the, the elimination of all these other players oh. from the legend oh, of there, well, uh, and, and, and is no longer with us. Battle. No, 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 he died. Yeah. There's actually a very funny cartoon about that, uh, where it's like you're seeing uh, uh, Death in his cowl and everything, sitting there playing uh, in front of a guy who's like across the table from him with a DM screen and everything, and uh, Death is on his phone and he's talking, yes, yeah, you know about that game? Yeah. 
Yeah, we've been going for seven hours now, and you just brought out another book. <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> A fantastic reference to the, oh, I think the Ingmar Bergman film, um, where where a, a gentleman plays chess with death to postpone his, uh, his yeah. seizure. Oh, which was also lampooned in one of the final episodes of Lex, the bizarre Canadian-German science yeah. fiction series. Well, I only said, all of season one and most of season two. I think kind of dropped out of that, but please, please go on. Well, also, all the seasons were very different. Like, the first, yeah. the first season was four television movies, mm. and they were full of, like... Sex and oppression. It was and amazing. Cannibalism it was fantastic. Drugs. It was yeah. just fucking wild and gonzo. Then the second season was lower budget, but there was a lot more of them and continued the trend that anywhere that our heroes visit is destroyed after yes. they leave, either because of or in spite of their. That's their the one efforts. with Rutger Hauer in on the planet of the body part gambling thing. Was that the first no, season? No, Rutger Hauer was in the, in the first season. Was that still he was in the first the, season? Yeah, it was oh, in the second gee. or third episode was Eating yeah. Pattern yes. with the, with the drugs the one, where he yes. played Bog and he, and he sang the song and oh, what a fantastic one. He had like these amazing actors. You had, you had Ellen Dubin and uh, uh, Malcolm McDowell and you had your chap from uh, two people from uh, 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 Rocky Horror. Yes. One of them was Tim Curry. That's the one. That's yeah. definitely one of them. It was the guy who got left alone when everybody else left the planet because it was doomed was or something. Yes. Yeah. And he was just like left because he was drunk and like sleeping off his hangover, I think, and then they went and then woke, woke up, up on an abandoned planet. and everybody'd left. Yes, and the other one was Brad from Brad and Janet from, uh, from oh, Rocky, also Rocky, from Rocky Horror. Horror. Yes, and he played Thodin, the uh, skirt oh, wearing. Him. Yeah, that's wow, him. he looked pretty hunky, and uh, Thodin was pretty like right? yeah. Certainly with that vest and the and, yeah. the, and, the, and the frilly skirt and his and his presumably his boyfriend lover. I mean, they were they were kind of close when they there uh, was when they, yeah when they, they had the whole uh, resistance movement thing against his, his merciful divine shadow, shadow. His, his merciful the League of Twenty Thousand Planets. Season three was also wild because that takes place on a, a, a pair of planets. One of them's fire and one of them's water, and it's really kind of intense. And then the fourth season is Gonzo again. It takes place on this on this bizarre cartoonesque version of Earth. But yes, it, 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 one of the final episodes sees uh, Kai last of the Brunanji. Wow, welcome to the uh, Lex fancast, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Uh, you seem uh, to have made a bit of a segue. <laughs> playing, playing chess against death. And I recognize this game because it's called The Immortal I Game. I think you've told me about this, yes. I have indeed. It is, it is a beautiful game. It was played in the late 1800s. White immediately dominates and then is, is, is crucially undermined by black and obliterated until finally white manages to queen a pawn that had been concealing this whole time, had been quietly maneuvering it away, sacrificing almost its entire army until now it has a queen and then two more moves into checkmate. It's gorgeous. Yeah. That's not something that you can do with Dungeons and Dragons describing this cartoon. Oh, this well, you know, a good DM potential. hopes to think that he can do that. It's like, okay, you guys walk up to the warehouse and one of the players goes like, oh, does that mean it's only a house by full moon? And he was furiously scribbling in his loads. It's now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Correct. It has always been. <laughs> But yes, that idea of spinning a new tale, like that is the central theme of this anthology of stories, Grey Haven. All of these all of these people who have come to a point in their regular real world lives that they just no longer want to deal with. Yeah. And rather than face those consequences, they want to escape into this into this fantasy realm where they can be a ranger and an, a, an acrobat and a thief and a barbarian and a, and a, yep. and a cavalier and a magician and, uh, I guess, a little unicorn. Well, the unicorn was from the world, you know? That was just like their little local companion, their little... What are you doing right now? I was now? just like doing weird sounds. What kind of sounds were those? Are those unicorn sounds? Is that That's what you... kind of the sounds that... Little critter was or it was just bleating like the goat thing that's on the, the cover bad. here. Yeah, that's, that's that one. was that was Uni's sound. Yeah. Let's let do yours again. Oh well. <laughs> no, like, I wanna hear yours. Oh, hey, 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 what do you know? Okay. Somebody's gonna probably snip that out of this good. episode. That sounds and, like a good and, plan. And have Let's some fun do. with those those little enjoy do, those sound bites. Do some heavy do some heavy, create, do some heavy snipping on those. See, that that like... actually sounds like one of the spy sprites. Oh, yes. Also the portrayed on the cover. Yes. Clinging to the top of Uni's head. I thought this was an interesting way to, to sort of tie all this together because it, it's a really glum kind of story mm -hmm. that, that all of these people uh, uh, have returned here not to pursue some great quest or to liberate anyone, but simply to escape from the consequences of their own poor decisions. But consequences will always catch up with you in the form of Interdimpol. The interdimensional police force turns out the long arm of the law can actually reach through this portal and into this new realm, yeah. which has an extradition treaty with Earth. I'm not quite sure how that got worded into it. Like, must have been one of Gygax's legal uh, requirements that he wrote into the later 
better uh, versions of the. He uh, liked game. his sharpies. He liked to correct little little uh, no. uh, contracts and, and and requirements, even though they've all got these new identities now that they've returned to uh, the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Into Dimple is hot on their trail, uh, and they are surrounded by deep cover IRS accountants. Yes, it was uh, uh, Presto the magician, who uh, after he came back to uh, Earth. Uh, was one of the founders of Scruff, uh, you know the, uh, the, the the gay dating app. Ah, uh, yes, uh, and yes, unfortu- that's right. Unfortunately, he, uh, d- due to financial circumstances, he had to sell out his shares before they invested, and he got into this unfortunate situation where the, his co-founders made millions, and he sold out his shares for a few thousand. The uh, deep cover IRS accountants are after him for the supposedly missing money that he owed on those shares. Uh, uh, should yes, have sold. because he he front dated it, which I didn't know was possible. Like, yeah. I knew that you can back date. Uh, 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 stocks, but yes, he he managed to front date them, so he was he was paid their their two day value, but he owed taxes on their future value. Yeah, I don't know how we like. I mean, he has the worst accountant. Uh, yes, actually, not the worst. The worst accountant is uh, Eric the Cavalier. He was the spoiled little brat yes. who is also in deep with the IRS because he invested all his parents' money in Theranos, the fraudulent next generation blood testing company that that, that pretended oh. they had the, the the magical test that would only need one drop the of blood, blood and they could test for. 100. 200 uh, things or whatever it was, yes. Yeah, because they had a, a way back when they had a, they had a prototype that could actually do quite a lot with uh, with a single droplet of blood, and then later on it transpired that was all it would ever be able to do. The, the whole technology could never move forward. It would still need pints and pints of blood. It would still be incredibly expensive, but uh-huh. they concealed this fact from all their investors, from governments. Theranos was this enormously hyped company. Yeah, everybody wanted to buy into that. As did Eric the Cavalier, who uh, inherited his family's wealth yep. uh, and sank it all into Theranos and sank along with... Yes, uh, he figured, like, back to the world of Dungeons Dragons where I had my shield, which protects me from anything. And hopefully also from Which the, was uh, pretty much the only thing he did. It was, like, bitch about things and then stand in front of, usually, the dragon when it was breathing fire again to shield the party with his shield. Well, to shield himself and the party happens to be behind him. Everybody had their one thing that they did. And, and they did all the time. Uh, yes. And as a, as a narrative device, like, having someone who is entitled and complacent a lot is actually kind of a good way to establish what the stakes are of a scene because he'll just repeat them. True, and kind of worked in the story that he was he was the one who was always bitching and always going going on about things, but he was also the one who could protect them from anything. Thematically speaking, I guess that works. Apparently, can't protect them from the uh, uh, the deep cover IRS agents who could be anywhere. And his, no, they, uh, they, they form a bit of the backbone running through all of these uh, different stories in this book. Even though not all of these characters are being pursued over over money, there is uh, Bobby the Bob the Barbarian. <laughs> Both Barry and yes, <laughs> I can't tell. He's got like none of one of those like cone head hats on. Maybe I mean, uh, suppository hat. Presto is definitely definitely bald, but uh, Bobby the Barbarian, who is uh, being pursued by the uh, the Gumball Mafia, mm. now he's a very low stakes well, kind of guy. If, if you start putting ball bearings and you start painting them bright colors and you start yeah. selling them as gumballs, and yes, you are going to get them after you at some point. And, and Diana, the acrobat, after her uh, failed ice skating career, and her and her series of. Uh, vindictive ex-husbands. One of them leading to a knee injury. Oh my which... god, yes! I thought it was so dark that the husband led to the knee injury and well, not the failed ice skating career. Well, the, the husband's the one who caused the knee injury. because like, oh, you spent so much time skating and blah 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 and then, like, yeah, domestic violence. and Such a dark book. It we was. don't usually treat books this dark, but who else do we have? We had Hank the Ranger. Yep. We don't see much of him in the uh, book. He had a second secret family in Wisconsin and he also tried to do the same thing that Presto did, which is to take his whole family with him through mm-hmm. the portal and escape from his other family, the uh, the wife and the older adult children who felt immensely betrayed uh, and, 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 yes. and pursued him. Because dad never wanted to spend any time with them or play any games. Then he found his new family and then everything was like sugar and unicorns and rainbows. And yeah. Like, uh, and, they, and they heard these stories about this, this magical realm. And that becomes a bit of a bitter resentment thing. Yeah, I can see how that would go. fair play to them, honestly. Yeah, well. And you mentioned also Venger, who was yes. the original villain. Venger, Venger the White now. Venger the White, he, he made a pact where he traded his arms for wings... Which is weird, because he already sort of had, had wings. Kind, of, kind of wings. Yeah, we had that weird one horn growing out of the side of his head, which is yeah, always like... Yeah, he doesn't have that anymore. Now he's got the... Yeah. Uh, what do you call him? Sting? Sting David Bowie? Yes. Uh, uh, Tilda the, Swinton? The, wind, the winds are, the, are still black, but the rest of him is pure and white. Can you just imagine how much it must suck to have wings instead of arms? 
Ooh, instead I of. I mean, it kind of works for that bird in uh, the new uh, Zelda game. Oh, yeah. uh, Car or Kai or was Cass, it? Cass, that was, Cass, that was that's the one, yes. Yeah, but what? he had weird, like, dexterous fingers. He was more like yeah, a... Yeah, feather finger type things. Oh, I guess that would literally be pterodactyl. Terra means wing. Yeah, wing fingers. Dactyl, dactyl, dactyl is finger. I mean, that's what bats are. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. They are not the greatest at, like, brushing their teeth. Although they do love to be brushed. Well, who doesn't? Oh, there is the there is the adorable little little video of uh, yeah. Welcome to cover my ass, where we describe internet videos to you. <laughs> of a, of we, a, might, of a, we might need to start a separate podcast for that, but this sounds like <laughs> yes. a good idea, actually. <laughs> Describing internet videos that we love, where a, a little bat is like wrapped up in a little handkerchief or something, and someone's brushing it with a, with a toothbrush, and it's having such a good time. It's just brushy, brushy, brushy. It's gently along his head, and it's there, it's, it's quite a popular meme. So that's probably. What uh, uh, what Venger sort of needs a as he's, yeah, yes. he can't hold a brush himself. He's because he doesn't have pterodactyls. Uh, 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 well, you can get one of those happy cow things. Happy cow. Have you never seen those? It's kind of like a car wash with one of those rotary brushes, except it's got stiff bristles, and ah, then you put yes. them up, and it's like cow walks up to it, and the thing starts rotating. And they, they, do you know they, what they call that in German? Huh? Kuputmaschine. Kup- <laughs> No, that's really what no, cool. I get it. I get it. It's, it's, the, it's the cow yeah. polishing yeah, machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a shoe boots, co- it's a coop boots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. like, fair enough. But yeah, the, they're actually the, the brand, or the it's, it's actually called Happy Cow. Uh, oh, that's so great! And they like, yeah, they love it. And it's like and you can kind of shrug up to it and to... push it up, and it's 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 mounted on a moving thing, so they can, they can kind of push it up in its own way, pushes it down, and that's it's so like, good. and they love it. Well, they also like the hug box. It's this sort of brace where there's a there's a front part where the cow can stick its head through and then push forward. And as it push forward, two uh, cushioned panels come in from the side mm. and squeeze it. Yeah, sort of like swaddling, and that's a and that's a relaxing experience yeah. for the cow. Uh, I, I learned this from a, a woman called Temple Grandin, and she's famous for three things: yeah. uh, for speaking out on on autism because she's she's a person on the autistic spectrum. She's the the proponent of neurodiversity. She invented the hug box, which was a therapeutic device based yeah. on that for for herself. Which when she invented that in in college, they took it away from her, and she and she had to go to court to get it to get it back because they considered it a sex thing. No oh, go. And she invented the modern abattoir. Yeah, the ones with the little the, the, the curving uh, with the uh, curves that are that are that are designed to be calming and soothing and uh, yeah a remarkable woman she gave a, she gave a ted talk there's a movie about her she's still alive oh. uh claire danes I'll, plays her i have to watch the uh, ted talk that sounds like interesting it really is so yes sheila's story about uh, how she ended up as a uh, used car salesman whoa uh, yes and the... had to like flee from her <laughs> mob gambling debts uh, <laughs> yes again the mob who's infiltrated the deep core irs accountants and is using their mole there there to track it's layers Sheila. on layers, isn't it? It's it is. onions all the way down of infiltrants into this like inter Dimpole and the. It's and amazing the how many people IRS are into D and D, and when it comes down to it, and we're like pouring through their rule books to see what they can. And I mean, you know, IRS agents when it comes to rule books, they love that shit. Oh yeah. So they're like, yeah. oh well, here on page fourteen, it says in paragraph eight that uh, they are entitled to. Do you know the American tax code is seventy five thousand pages. Oh, isn't that crazy? That sounds complicated. Recently, I saw uh, uh, there was a tweet by some some wrestler, you know, American wrestling, mm-hmm. pretend wrestling, uh, who Ooh. tweeted the photo of himself well, well yeah. yeah 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 because it's yeah. i mean it's a, it's a place but that was a, that was not a re- pretend wrestler that was not a uh a world Wasn't wrestling he? federation no that was one of those okay. oh oops. yeah say no oh, kaki knows a lot about sports ladies <laughs> and, and he said i don't play D when he posted a picture of himself and, uh, yeah and then one of his adversaries who had bested him i think once no, they were up they, they were up for a match the, uh shortly afterward because like I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, See, I thought it was pretend wrestling because the pretend wrestling I actually really like. It's admire. storytelling. It's storytelling. It's and so many of the of the performers there, like they're incredibly dedicated to their craft, but like they come from theater backgrounds mm. or clown school. Oh, as long as they have got the muscles and uh, and they build the muscles. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like a modern commedia dell'arte. Let's let, let's let's take a let's take a review of the various stories that we've had in the anthology so far. Uh, we've had Hank the Ranger with his bow and arrow in a secret second family. Uh, a Diana the acrobat. But as you as you mentioned, she after, had the after a failed ice skating career and her busted knee and the domestic abuse and the, and the serial ex husband. Whoa! And Sheila, the thief, uh, the used car salesman who uh, uh, fell into deep gambling debts. Uh, debts also for Eric the Cavalier who invested it all in in Theranos. Presto, with, with, with the shares, yeah, with the, the shares got bought out. Yeah, 
ones. Wow, well, I think only Uni kind of made it by by sort of hanging around. But Uni stuck with Bob. Uh, Bobby, Bobby, the, the Bobby, barbarian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The little dude with the helmet. He was such a hoot in the cartoon. He was like the hel- Did he have the helmet? Like, he had the like big club thing. Which Did he was have like, a horned helmet? Yeah, I, yeah, I think he... I, I suppose he must have had. Who's to say? Uh, we've got bitter divorces. We've got uh, we've got people kidnapping their children. Uh, Hank bringing his whole second second family from the, into the into the, into the um, show and being pursued. And, uh, leading to the beautiful cherubic children on the front cover. Wait, I thought we said that those were the kidnapped oh, children yes. by... It could be anything. I mean, uh, this is... Uh, as much as these stories are supposed to be are supposed to be different, they have a lot in common. And eventually, uh, our heroes meet each other again for the first time in the uh, uh, Tax Dodger Tunnel Town because they are not the only Earthlings to have tried to escape into the world of Dungeons & Dragons. Fantasy Dragon. is a very powerful escape vehicle for people. They're trying to escape from all the all the spy sprites because while they're under the uh, under the watchful eye of the spy sprites, they have to maintain this pretense that, oh, we're doing Dungeons & Dragons here. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a noble and elf. That's and their thing. They're working and they're living the world. They uh, they tried to escape it for like three seasons and they knew what they were coming back to and they preferred it to their life on Earth. Especially when they when they get access to the uh, privacy crystals. Ah, is, yes. Yeah. Uh, and we see a few of them wearing it on the front cover. Uh, a few of the women, they have the uh, the privacy crystals on their, on their foreheads. Yeah. Each story ends with the hero of that particular story finding their crystal. And the last story, of course, brings it all together in the book. Well, yes. After Bobby, the uh, the barbarian, gets his uh, sapphire suppository. Uh, yes. He, he, well, not all the crystals are worn in the same location. You can certainly see his face on this on this cover, like staring staring glimly ahead. Um, where eventually they all and we usually deal with upbeat books, right? Mm. So for a book to end in in such a grim fashion, where they uh, they find peace from the IRS and the long arm of uh, into the Doom Hall, yeah. uh, only by entering the employ of the not. Narco alchemist, the narc alchemist, the, he's basically yeah. a drugs wizard. Well, there's a reason that Venger, the white's wings are still black. It's yeah, like, he's it's, got the hookup. His hands, wings, in this case, are tainted by the, the work that he has to do, do with them. And the mind is willing, but the flesh is weak, I suppose. Oh, because yeah. he's like become this force of good. But he sees that in order to be this good thing, he has to meddle in dirty affairs which is the yes. reason why his wings are still black wow what a great book yeah. this book is it, it's full of such symbolism it, it might be a bit of a prophetic book when it comes to that like how the oh ev- yeah everybody is constantly watched by uh, the powers that be i mean back, back when this book was written google wasn't a thing yet so i guess the, no, the various true. authors decided that oh we're going to go with the other almighty powerful th- entity which in the u.s which is the irs yeah uh, true. so let's let's use them as a metaphor for the <laughs> <laughs> for, for these dark times and dark times throughout like the whole book is is so grim and even the ending so they finally escape this fantasy world where they were trying to save the world from the, the forces of evil and misunderstanding and discord made it back into the real world where they fucked up their lives and now they're Fled back, in back this, into fantasy in the employ of this anarcho narco alchemist yeah and someone has to make all those potions and that has to do to I mean, gather the like, ingredients and grind up the pixies to get the dust Oh, wow, yeah. Well, you know, pixie dust, it has to come from somewhere. It's, it's not spanking little pixies like you see Disney doing. No, no, it's ground them into a power. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we know that the episode is called Spanking the Pixie now. Well, there we go. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thank you for naming this episode once again. Well, hey, how are we going to rate this book? Because it's not in our habit to, to be down on this book, but no. I well, found it so grueling. I would like to rate it on the most underappreciated die in the D&D spectrum, which has to be the D12. Why is that the most because underappreciated? The, the dodecahedron? Yeah. Yes, nobody uses it. What? It's like, it's the, the only thing... It, 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 there is a few we- rare weapons which like have a D12 damage. I think the Barbarian has it as a hit die, and that is pretty much it. Nothing uses the D12. So I'd like to rate it out of 12. Now, I've got to say... I like the dodecahedron. I think yeah. it's a lovely shape. It is. I, I'm always glad when I encounter a D12, but you're right. I don't think I've ever rolled one. D4, I've even the, rolled... The, the caltrop of I know. the it, dice. It's like you think stepping on a Lego brick is bad. Try <laughs> stepping on a D4 in the middle of the night. <laughs> so out of out of 12, how would you rate this book? Ooh, I will give it a 9. More nine. than a solid 8. It was a bit of a downer. Not, a bit, a bit unlike the books we usually here. do. Even Especially here. for a book that Marion Zimmer Bradley didn't write a word in other than the foreword. What a we have in store for our uh, readers next yes. week. Next week is a bit of a classic, although not many Ooh. people have heard of it. It's called Fart Proudly. <laughs> it's the writings of Benjamin Franklin's You Never Read in School. 
<laughs> Thank you for joining us at Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by, by its, its cover. cover. <laughs> this is good. Oh, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons now. Uh, what, are you, what are you going to play? If you're going to be Dungeons and Dragons right now, what? what? God, uh, I would play a ranger. I want to, I was going to see Unicorn. Unicorn. That's not a class. It's not a class. It's not, I thought, hey, I thought Dungeons and Dragons was a game for the imagination. You can play whatever you want to play. But it's not a class. I want to play the class Unicorn. Make it happen. Oh, we can, you can be a race. Unicorn is a race, not a class. Okay, I think you're you can being be a, you can be a, really, you can be a really obstructive You can be a mage literalist. unicorn, or you can be a it barbarian unicorn. It should be a game unicorn. of the imagination where you can just it do is. whatever you want. But you can oh, explore you yourself. Rules. The whole, who's just, uh, yeah. who's, whose rules say that I can't be a little unicorn? What the DMs? Then? I don't know who is going to DM this this nightmare train wreck, whatever. <laughs>